angel to Jude, and even Michael the archangel, there is not bring the raving accusation against Satan. You've got to watch how you handle your spirit. Because the wiles of the enemy, his methods are of arms. I've heard people take hammers on jobs. Instead of, you know, taking the hammer and doing what it's supposed to do with it, they hit the wrong nail, you know, the nail on the finger. Yeah. Stand back and stand there and holler, God, in such a way that it was Satan grabbing a hold of the words and Amen. blessings and turning it into cursing. Amen. You have to watch how you handle the wiles of the enemy. It's so real today. It's so real. Amen. If you've got your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Exodus, the third chapter. I'd like to preach a message this morning entitled, You Must Be Joking, God. You must be joking, God. You know, sometimes when God speaks, we often treat it as being hilarious. We treat it as a joke. We don't understand how God's language is, and we don't understand what God can do. Sometimes we look around us, you see, in the circumstances that we're in, it seems like it's a funny situation that God would be talking to us at a time like that. Can you say amen? Yeah. And sometimes because of the place that we're at, God sometimes talks to us while everybody else is having a big party. Did you know that? God speaks to us sometimes while everybody else is crying. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we hear the voice of God, and instead of listening to what He's saying, we'll sometimes look at the circumstances and just turn around and look Him right in the face and say, You must be joking, God. I want to take you today to some famous scripture. Third chapter of the book of Exodus. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes for off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of thy people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large and unto the land flowing with milk and honey, and the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherein, wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth thy people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, 
that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. My thought would be this morning, surely God, you must be joking. Surely God, you must be joking. I want you to look at the text here. I want you to look at the setting of, of, of all this that's taking place. You see, Moses is in Midian. He's not with the children of Israel. He's over in Midian. He's in the backside of the desert. He, he, he's over there and he's, and he's working. He's got a job to do. And see, Israel, though, they're not in Midian. They're in misery. I look over at somebody and say, I feel like I'm in misery sometimes. I feel like the man of God is on the backside of the desert. He's not where I am. If he was where I am, he would be feeling what I'm feeling. He'd be seeing what I'm seeing. I'm looking around. I'm seeing trouble. I'm seeing turmoil. I'm going to look over at somebody and say, God's got a Moses. He's going to lead you out. I'll just get a hold of yourself this morning. Amen. God calls Moses for a certain job. But Moses isn't no young young chicken running around out there. No, 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 no. He's not just some young child running here and there. No, 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 no. He's 80 years old. Uh, but you see, God has been preparing him uh, uh, for such a time as this. Uh, uh, can you say amen? Uh, he's got his power. Uh, he's got his mind. Uh, he's got his glory. Uh, and God's looking down upon this man. Uh, he's 80 years old. Uh, and he's in a desert place. Uh, he's not what he was. Uh, a 20 year old. Uh, he wasn't what he is. Uh, at 15 years old. No, time has changed him. But God is about ready to use him in a greater work than he's ever seen in all of his life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And God is giving him prepared for this day. He's tending sheep. Oh, that must be a, a pretty stinky job. But he's sitting sheep. He's startled by this bush. It's, it's blazing. It's, it's, it's on fire. But it's not being consumed. The bush is not being consumed. He sees the fire. Listen to me, church. God's got to get our attention sometime or another. He might set your fields on fire. He might set everything in your house on fire. Everything might begin to go apart. But God's trying to get your attention when somebody just looked up and see the saying, God, you must be joking. You've got to be Look at me. Bless you, Lord. I was sitting in a restaurant yesterday. Bless you, Lord. Talking to a, a man at the restaurant. He said, uh, he said, Pastor, he said, is our, uh, is our friend going to be coming up from Kentucky? And I said, uh, he's talking about Glenn Wilson. And I said, uh, well, I said, Glenn's called me three times and I haven't called him back. He said, well, he said, is there a reason why you haven't called him back? I said, I've been busy. He said, don't get too busy. I said, don't get too busy. He said, no. I said, well, you know, if we get Glenn Wilson up here, I said, would you come out to the church? He said, well, I'm probably going to be coming out your way anyway just to visit with you. I said, good. I said, we got homecoming coming up. Yeah. And I said, I'd like to see you on homecoming day. He said, well, we could, we could probably do something there. And, and then he said, he said, by the way, he said, get a hold of Glenn. He said, I'll bring him a bunch of my cabbage soup. <laughs> I said, that was really hard. That, that, that was really hard. You see, you see, here he is, he's watching this bird.